Hi team. Welcome back to another update. Let's go see what there is to see this time. Starting off with our little veggie patch. We've done some maintenance with the tomatoes and everything is much more open. We've been experiencing a lot of powdery mildew, probably due to lack of circulation. Catching up with the carrots here. They are still getting chewed on, and so some of the carrot tops kind of just look like grass. But that's just because they've been chewed up by the rabbits. Let's get a closer look. This week we decided to pull up one of our carrots to see how it did and it turns out that we might have carrots of some kind. The one that we pulled up was really small but texture was there, the crunch was there, and the flavor was there. So that's pretty exciting. We will probably let these go for as long as we can to our first frost or even beyond. That's going to put them at probably close to 90 days. Uh, I think the packet said 60 to 80, but due to all the adversity these carrots are facing, we want to give them as much time as possible. So we found a, or determined, a forever home for the hydrangeas. We got these in a pot from Costco maybe two months ago, maybe about a month and a half. And it had been living in that pot since, until we were ready to find a forever home for it. And I think this might be it. Taking a closer look at the morning glories. We have been seeing flowers open for most of the day at this point, which is a little different compared to the rest of the year. Just beyond the foliage of the morning glory and all the flowers. You can see all of these little pods. We have been working to take these off of the vine and grab the seeds out of them when they're ready. And we will try next year to plant our own morning glories from seeds. Fun story about the morning glory. In harvesting the seeds from the pods, our hands, fingers, got really tingly. And so it turns out if you're working with morning glory, especially pulling stuff and getting sap on you, you should maybe wear gloves. Now we know. During the last video, I commented on how we think we have a lot of moles on the property. We also think that we have at least one rabbit living under our deck. We see it most days. And we are starting to see uh, burrows getting dug along the edge of the deck. This one here was yesterday a approximately three inch wide hole. It looks like it's been backfilled or something today. But we keep seeing burrows, or holes at least. 
We'll have to keep an eye on that. I don't know if we'd actually do anything if it turned out to be Burroughs, but it would be nice to know. Well, bud. One thing that we'll be trying to do a little bit more next year is fostering the growth of the clover that we have in this yard. Here we can see that the clover has started to take over pretty well, um, but it still has some competition and it hasn't fully taken over. We've got some creeping charlie, some grass, some dandelions. And so we're hoping that next year, if we get the clover seeded super early in the year, we might be able to give it an environment in which it can thrive and in which we may get to do less yard maintenance. And here we are at the garden gate. I wanted to just show you some of what's happening in here, including some of the mushrooms that have popped up, some of the weeds that keep poking through, and while we're doing that, you might see a tomato or two that we've tossed. We have been taking the approach of just throwing our tomatoes throughout the yard anytime that they're split or creature eaten. And then next year we'll get some volunteers. And some will be in the garden, some will be in the yard, but it won't really matter. Before we take a look at some mushrooms, let's take a nice look at this tree. So this tree we had thought might be a spruce, but it turns out it might actually be a tamarack tree or a larch tree, which is a conifer deciduous or deciduous conifer. So that's pretty fun. Here is a pile of mushrooms. Earlier today, these were much more alive looking. So it really just goes to show how quickly things can go through their life cycles. One thing I notice while I stand in the garden here is that it smells really good, actually. It smells a little bit like wood, not so much like cedar, but just wood. And I think all the grass clippings on here have really changed the bouquet that I can smell. So even though we put cardboard down and almost a foot of mulch, weeds are still finding their way through. Life will find a way. So our current approach is just finding these and pulling them. Often we get a big old white thing, either a root or a stalk, and we just come out here once a week or so. It takes maybe three minutes. And we weed our wood chips. As we're getting to the end of September, things are starting to look a little bit spookier around here. Oh no. Spooky. A bit over a week ago, we transplanted some hostas from elsewhere on the property to our front flower beds and made sure to mulch around them. We moved them up here because we figured since they're shade tolerant and this area of the yard gets a lot of shade, it seemed like a perfect fit. To help our property drain better, we have a series of tubes and hoses that reach from the back corner of our property underground 
past the house, still underground, you can barely see it, up into the culvert. We'll link to a video on this wonderful development here, but we've done some work to make sure that our culvert does not get blocked and can continue to drain the property effectively. That's pretty much everything from the home farm for this update. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.